Oh, hey, we're live. I'm being told we're live. We're off the mark, ready to go. Um, welcome back, everybody. Another Monday morning. I hope you've all had a lovely weekend. I um, hope you've all had your morning cuppers and you're uh, switched on and ready to go. Um, we're back with our, our second week, and it is our, our last session in our Fit Body, Fit Mind course. Um, and today we're going to be looking at uh, diabetes, what it is, um, and we've actually got a, a little quiz to do. Um, see, see, test our understanding of diabetes. Of course, when we go through the answers, we'll pick up a load of new information if we didn't know it first time round. So, yeah, we're going to be looking at diabetes and um, the, the way that that can affect the body um, and where it comes from in the first place. We're going to be looking at improving day to day brain activity, something that um, I've really myself tried to focus on through through several lockdowns and keeping keeping the mind active, you know, trying to find like um, stuff to, to keep your mind challenged a little bit as well. I think, you know, when when there was a time last year when, you know, the most taxing thing to do every day was watch Netflix or, or, or something like that, you know. So, um, yeah, so just keeping the mind working and, and some of the many benefits we can get from that. Um, and a big one um, to finish off uh, today's session, guys, we're going to be looking at nutrition quite a lot where we're going to be looking at um, the benefits of eating healthier, you know, so what can we expect to um, gain from eating healthy? You know, we all know that we should, but but really why? What could the effects be? Um, and how we can eat healthier as well, which comes down to quite often one big thing, guys, and that tends to be um, being able to interpret food, lab food labels. Pardon me, a little, bit, a little mini hiccup there. Um, yeah, so um, being able to interpret food labels and make good choices and make sure that we're, we're picking things that we are happy to take home and put into our body. Um, and we've got an idea of, you know, if we are having a little bit of a treat, we need to know it's a treat and we need to know how sort of naughty it is for us so we can factor it in the rest of our diet. I, I, I always say, um, why... Would we want to eat well and exercise to be healthy and happy, but then deprive ourselves of all the stuff that we actually enjoy eating and doing, you know, so it's balance, it's everything in moderation and finding a way to um, understand our food enough to have these treats and still not let it sort of get in the way of our fitness goals or our health goals, you know, physique, whatever it might be. Um, so it's it's actually learning how to have some of the wrong stuff in the right way, I guess. Um, you know, when 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 we know what we're doing with it, um, you know, as opposed to just cutting everything out of your diet that you actually enjoy. But we'll get on to food and nutrition um, in just a little bit, guys. So we've got a, like I say, we've got a um, a little bit of a little bit of a rundown to do on um, diabetes. Diabetes is something that um, it's a it's a, in fact. Don't want to give you any answers to any questions just yet. So I will say it is just it's it's a condition um, that um, the the signs and symptoms of diabetes. Before we get into what diabetes actually is, um, so we've got frequent urination. So if you find yourself urinating a lot more, going to the toilet a lot more, extreme thirst, increased hunger, um, nerve pain, uh, or numbness. Slow healing wounds, blurred vision, and even dark skin patches can be um, signs and symptoms of diabetes. Um, but how much do we actually know about diabetes already? So um, it is something that I've got obviously a little bit of an uh, experience with, having grown up with family members that were diabetic. Maybe you know somebody who's diabetic. Um, maybe they are and you don't know. And maybe you've seen somebody doing the old, um, it's like a blood sugar test where you'll get the pen, prick the end of your finger, put that on like a little strip that goes in the machine and that tells you what your blood sugar level is at that time. Um, so, so that is diabetes is, is, is sort of a um, condition that's going to affect your body's ability to deal with sort of um, high spikes in sugar and stuff like that. So um, with, with, with diabetes, it's a little bit, um, it can be too high, your blood sugar, or it can be too low as well. It's not just one or the other. Um, so we've got different terms for which it, for what each one means. Um, and 
using one of those little machines to check your blood sugar can actually tell you whether you need to raise your blood sugar or, or lower it as well. So that's just like a little sort of like checkup used throughout the day to make sure that, that, that you're within this sort of healthy sort of range. Um, but like I promised, guys, we've got a little quiz to do. So, oh, well, morning, Wave. I've just seen Whips get it in the chat. Morning, buddy. Um, I'm very well, thank you, mate. I've had a, I've had a nice, nice, steady weekend. Got the dog out for a nice walk yesterday, um, and it stayed dry as well, so I can't really complain. Um, how's yourself, Wave? I hope you're well, man. Hope you've had a good weekend. Um, how's the gigging going? Are you still playing? Um, right, guys. So we've got a little quiz to do. So if we grab ourselves a pen and paper, um, we have got, I believe. Um, 12 questions, I want to say, 12 questions. A couple more, we've got 15 questions to do. So what we've got, guys, 15 questions. Grab yourself a pen and paper, and we're just going to work through. So we'll go one answer at a time, um, or one question at a time, sorry, get our answers down. And then once we've gone through, we'll get to the end. We'll come back at the start and we'll just do all the answers in one go and have a little bit of a chat about what we find on the way through as well. Um, so, right. So if we've got our pen and paper ready to go, let's get into it then. If you don't have your pen and paper just yet, um, by all means, if you need to, just pause it um, and then you can just catch up with us uh, when you when you do uh, get your little bit sorted. So... Let's get into it then, guys. So question one, um, how many different types of diabetes are there, do we think? So we, we've got a, a bit more of an understanding of what diabetes is. Um, how many types of diabetes are there, though? There's one, two, three, or four, A, B, C, or D. Okay, guys, spinning on then, spinning on. Question two, which type of diabetes is the most common? Is it type one or is it type two? What type of diabetes is the most common, type one or type two? Okay, question three, type one diabetes accounts for what percentage of known cases? So in all known cases of diabetes, what percent of that is type 1 diabetes? If you're not sure what type 1 diabetes is yet. Oh, nice way. We've had a few gigs. Excellent. Excellent. Are you... Um... What's the crowds like? I haven't um like like what sort of places are you playing? Is it is it is it sort of pubs? Um, is it open mic night? Is it community centres? Um, quite quite interested to know actually because of course this time last year we couldn't do anything like that. You know it's so nice to to have live music back again and 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 and, and like I say a lot of the stuff that we do enjoy doing. Um. And like we've talked about in some of our other sessions, um, it's nice to have access to a lot of stuff, um, even sort of fitness-wise that we didn't have this time last year. Swimming baths being open again, the gyms are open again now, um, which reminds us, Wave, how are you getting on? Have you, have you, have you been? Are you still a member? Um, how's things going there? Um, but yeah, like let's, let's, let's make the most of stuff that we didn't have this time last year, guys, um, especially if we're, you know, double vaxxed and... and individually feel comfortable doing it you know why not okay so question three was type 1 diabetes accounts for what percentage of known cases question four uh, is the flip side of the coin then so type 2 diabetes accounts for what percentage of known cases so remember that both of these will add up to 100 yeah for all known cases so we've got type 1 is what percent and type 2 is what percent yeah, so for type 2 diabetes, we've got 40 to 50%, 60 to 70%, or 85 to 90% of all known cases. What percentage do we think is type 2 diabetes? Question 5, then. Um, diabetes is best defined as um, what? Is it A, a metabolic disease characterized by low blood sugar? A met, uh, B, a metabolic disease 
uh, characterized by high blood sugar. C, a family of blood infections. D, none of the above. So question five, is diabetes a metabolic disease characterized by low blood sugar? Metabolic disease characterized by high blood sugar? Family of blood infections or none of the above? Well, what do we think? What do we think? A second before we spin on to the next one. Okay, question six. Um, diabetes can be cured with diet, exercise, and meditation. True or false? So diabetes can be cured with diet, exercise, and meditation. Do we think that's true or is it false? Can we cure diabetes with diet? exercise and medication. True or false, and beauty of true or false, if you're not sure, you can have a guess and you've got 50-50 chance. Okay, question seven, which is not a symptom of diabetes, if we recall that first slide that we looked at, so which is not a symptom of diabetes? Is it itchy skin, thirst, frequent urination, or muscle pain? Which is not a symptom of diabetes? Itchy skin, thirst, frequent urination, and muscle pain. Okay, ready for question eight. Again, if I'm moving a little bit quick for you and you want a little bit more time, just pause it. Just pause it and catch up. Um, question eight, insulin is a natural hormone secreted or created by which organ or gland? Is it kidneys? Is it liver? Is it pancreas? Or is it the spleen? So where is insulin created in the body? It's a natural hormone, but where does it come from? Kidneys, liver, pancreas, or spleen. Question nine. People who are obese are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. True or false, do we think? People who are obese are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. Oh, Wim sounds like you've been full of busy. Full of busy, you got two bands on the go. Nice. Oh, I'll have to have a look through, try and find some of them videos on Facebook as well. I've seen a few of them. I've seen a few of them. Um, I remember having a look last time. Um, it was after I came along and shadowed Mel for a couple of sessions and met you and had a little bit of crack. I did go on and have a look. Um, I can't remember whether you do vocals as well, buddy, actually. Do you do vocals? I know you're a guitarist. Um, but nice way, I'm guessing you're singing, yeah, if you're doing Busker's Nights. It's nice, it's nice to go back to, um, it must be nice to have like a little bit of what feels like normality back. After all of this, you know, I feel as though that's one thing that a lot of people missed out on, either as a performer or as somebody who just enjoys music of some kind. Like not being able to go and watch live music has been like one of the things that I've probably missed most through lockdown, to be honest. No gigs, no festivals, no open mic nights, none of that. Um, so, yeah, must be nice to have that, buddy. Uh, okay, so question 10. Diabetes is considered a reversible condition, though or false? What do we think? Pre-diabetes is considered reversible. True or false? And again, have a guess if you're not sure. And we're on our last, uh, last handful of questions now, guys. So question 11. Type 2 diabetes can cause long-term damage in the where? Kidney, eyes, nerves, or all of the above. Where can type 2 diabetes cause long-term long -term damage? Kidneys, eyes, nerves, or all of the above. Okay, question 12. Gestational diabetes is a, um, is, a, is a rare condition, but when does it occur? 
when does gestational diabetes occur? Is it during pregnancy, after a bout with the shingle, at birth, or after the menopause? Gestational diabetes. A little clue in there if we look at the word gestational as well. I don't want to give you too much information. I don't want to give it away. Uh, question 13. Question 13. And last couple. Um, people with diabetes are prone to which of these? Is it acne, pimples, infections, or migraines? Last two then, question 14, with type 1 diabetes, the body does not produce insulin, true or false? Mm -hmm. With type 1 diabetes, the body does not produce insulin, true or false? Okay, question 15 then, the last one. When the body does not respond to the insulin it makes, what's this called? Type 1 diabetes, type 2 diabetes, both of the above or none of the above? Yeah? When the body does not respond to the insulin it makes, is it called type 1, type 2, both of the above or neither of the above? When the body does not respond to the insulin it makes. Back in just two seconds. Okay, right. So we should all have answers for uh, each of those questions now, including question 15. Um, let's go back to the start. And um, unless anybody wants any more, uh, any of those questions going over again, I'm more than happy to start working through some of the answers. Oh, you're a bit of a singer way by, yeah? Yeah. Um, the straight jackets and the Wednesdays. Nice. Nice. I like them. Good names. Um, <laughs> a bit of a crooner. But you're one step further than me, mate. I'm no, no singer at all. I, um, like you say, the, the drummer just hits hits the things and makes a lot of, <laughs> it makes a lot of racket. Yeah. Um, you know, being being self-taught, I am. Um, I never learned any anything properly musical or anything like that. Just like making a racket, really. Uh, okay, then question one. Um, back to the start. How many different types of diabetes are there? Uh, one, two, three, or four? Um, is two. Um, as we've sort of seen in some of the other questions as we've gone through. Your main and your primary two types of diabetes are type 1 diabetes and type 2, yeah, um, with a big sort of distinction between the two. And we'll get into that in just a sec. So question one was B. Yeah, it was two types of diabetes. Question two was, so which type of those two types is most common? Uh, we've got type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Which one is the most common? Um, it is, of course, type 2. Yeah, so that would be B again as well. Um, type 2 diabetes is uh, far the most common. How much is by far, guys? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. So type 1 diabetes accounts for what percentage of known cases? So we know it's less than type 2 because we know the type 2 is the uh, most common. So it's got to be less than 50%, hasn't it? That doesn't rule any of these out at all. Um, 10 to 15%, 30 to 40%, or 45 to 55%. Um, and it is, um, question three is A. So we've got 10, 15%. Yeah, so um, by definition, so if question three was, uh, the answer is A, yeah. So type 1 diabetes accounts for 10 to 15% of known cases, which means... Type 2 diabetes account for the rest. Yeah, so if the answer is 10 to 15, the answer for this one must be the only one with 10 to 15% left over. So type 2 diabetes, guys, is um, is actually um, responsible for 85 to 90% of known cases. So, uh, like, almost like 9 out of 10 
people with diabetes have got type two diabetes, which is it's 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 quite a big sort of difference, isn't it? You know, it's not like split split down the middle like you might expect. Um, and 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 that that really comes from the difference between type one and type two, and how we can end up with it. Um, okay. So, um, diabetes in itself is best defined as what, guys? So we've got um, a metabolic disease characterized by low blood sugar or high blood sugar, um, a family of blood infections or none of the above. Um, and the answer is actually uh, B, so it's high blood sugar. So what happens is your, your, your body might not be producing enough insulin to counteract the sugar in your system. So you would then need to um, inject with insulin to help bring that down. Down, potentially, you know, as opposed to that, that's normally uh, the way the way that it would be. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's high blood sugar, and your body's um, struggling to to cope with it, which of course just can keep it increasing, really. Um, okay, so five was E. Okay, so diabetes can be cured with diet, exercise, and medication. True or false? True or false? Um, that is actually false. Um, as much as diet, exercise, medication can help, um, it can help you live with a lot of different conditions. Diabetes can't actually be cured. Um, it tends to be if you get to um, you get to the point where you um have full blown um diabetes, you 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 probably are going to be on medication and um, for life you know a healthier lifestyle can reduce the meds that you need um you'll probably always need some form of treatment once you've got full-blown um diabetes which is of course why it's um extra helpful to be able to sort of recognize the um symptoms of, of sort of onset diabetes which we'll um which we'll get to as well um okay question seven which is not a symptom of diabetes. So itchy skin, thirst, frequent urination, and muscle pain. Which of these is not a symptom? Um, and it is muscle pain, guys. So itchy skin, thirst, and frequent urination um, are all um, potential symptoms of diabetes. Yeah, so going back to that first slide. There we go. So we had them on the first slide. Uh, okay, then. So question eight. Um, insulin is a natural hormone created by which organ or gland? Was it the kidney, the liver, the pancreas, or the spleen? Um, and the answer is actually pancreas for that one. So our pancreas. If you've heard of it but not entirely sure what it does, what its job is, um, it's partially uh, responsible for... Um, producing insulin for the uh, for the body. Okay, question nine. People who are obese are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. True or false? What do we think? True or false? People who are obese are more likely to develop type 2 diabetes. It is actually true, guys. Um, type 2 diabetes tends to come around from our environment and our lifestyle choices, um, our diet, um, how much are we exercising. Um, and it's it's quite eye-opening, actually, that what we said, like nine, nine out of ten people, nine out of ten people-ish um, with diabetes have a type of diabetes that we're bringing on ourselves, you know, um, and... Of course, we live in a much more convenient life these days, um, as opposed to even 50 years ago, never mind going back longer. Um, and that's why diabetes is being such a big a problem. Um, life's got more convenient for us, and we're eating less good quality food. Um, sugary snacks tend to be sort of easy um, and usually cheap enough um, and give us what we sort of what we think um we need which is a boost of energy to get us through the next hour you know and who hasn't been there before where they just oh i need something to get us through the next hour uh, you know you have a little sugary snack to pick you up or or something like that as well um and there's there's sugar coming into foods that you know you wouldn't really expect sugar to be in 
uh, you know, bolognese sauces and stuff like that, and you know, bread, um, just 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 sugar going into stuff that doesn't need sugar because it, it obviously makes it taste nicer. Sometimes it works quite well as a preservative, um, and it is addictive as well. You know, there's companies that will put sugar into stuff just to make the product more addictive. Um, but yeah, it's absolutely amazing to me that we've got, um, that we've got this this type two diabetes, which is the most common by quite a lot. And this is the type of diabetes that we, like I say, um, is sort of like a, a byproduct of, of of our lifestyle, as opposed to type one diabetes, which tends to be sort of genetic and and passed down in the family. Um, type two diabetes is is generally speaking quite quite avoidable. Although, as we discussed, by the time you get to having full blown diabetes, um, there's no cure for it by that point. Uh, just getting caught up with weird, but did a live stream with Hatham. Did you want to hear? Oh, that's cool, Weber. Do you know what? I'll, I'll have a word with the guys in the office and see if we can set that up. I'm um, happy to do like, a live stream on here explaining how life's changed after lockdown. That'd be nice, actually. Yeah, I'll have a word with the guys in the office, see if we can set something like that away. That'd be quite cool. Um, okay, okay. Question uh, 10. Well, we will get these questions finished up. So question 10. Pre-diabetes is considered a reversible condition. True or false? That is actually true. If we can, um, in the state of pre-diabetes, before we have sort of developed full-blown diabetes, um, it can be reversed. At this point, um, if we start to make better food choices, um, you know, getting a little bit more active. So um, you can actually be in this stage of pre-diabetes as well for years, you know, but before being um, diagnosed. So it, again, if we can spot the signs, uh, there, there, there should be plenty of time to identify when we're in this um, pre-diabetes sort of stage and make changes to reverse it while we still can, so we don't need just medication to deal with it um, forever. So pre-diabetes is considered reversible, it's true. Right. Question 11. Type 2 diabetes can cause long-term damage in the kidneys, eyes, nerves, or all of the above, is all of the above, guys. Yeah, all of our organs can, can start to suffer. Bear with me two seconds. I'm um, not expecting anybody. You don't you just love it when the posty knocks for something that could have gone through the letterbox? He doesn't know that we're busy at work, are you, man? Um, right, guys, question 11 then. So, yeah, um, type, type, type 2 diabetes can cause long-term damage in all of the above. Uh, question 12, gestational diabetes, when does that occur? Is it during pregnancy, after about with the shingles, at birth? or after menopause. Um, and that is actually during pregnancy, guys. It, like I say, it's a really rare, um, it's, it's um, a really rare form of diabetes. It only happens in about 4% of women-ish. Um, I hadn't come across it until um, one of my clients that I used to train, um, her son was due to have a, have a baby. She was going to be a grandmother for the first time. And her son's partner actually... Um, sort of uh, experienced gestational diabetes and um, it, it can carry increased risk of complications during pregnancy but after the pregnancy it just it just goes it just goes again it's so it's so interesting it's so bizarre it really is um, and, and I don't know 100% why it happens I really don't um, but but like I say it only happens in about 4% of women um, and it, it comes on during pregnancy and then just disappears again afterwards so strange um, so question 12 was a um, question 13 people with diabetes are prone to which of these acne pimples infection 
or migraine. Um, and it is infection, guys. Because, um, of course, again, if we go back to that first slide, um, slow healing wounds is, is, is one of the signs and symptoms of diabetes. So, of course, if your wounds aren't healing just as quick, um, there is much more chance for infection to get in as well. So, um, yeah, C for question 13, guys. <laughs> we bought your package. I wish it was something for me. It was something for Alex. Uh, she'd been ordering some bits. It's come in a mystery box and because it's got her name on, I can't even open it. So I'm not going to know until she gets in the tea time. The mystery's going to kill us. And if I can open it and have a look and then just tape it back up. <laughs> she would know. <laughs> she would know. Uh, okay, question 14 then. Um, yeah, question 14. With type 1 diabetes, the body does not Use insulin, um, true or false, um, is true. So type one diabetes is that the body doesn't produce insulin in the first place. Yeah. Question fifteen: When the body doesn't respond to the insulin that it does make, this is called type two diabetes. Yeah. So fifteen is B. So when the body uh, doesn't produce insulin at all, it tends to be um, in like with diabetes uh, one. The body's just not producing any insulin. Um, type 2, the body produces insulin, but it can't use it. It doesn't respond to uh, it doesn't respond to it in the system. Yeah, so um, and that you know partially explains why um, type 1 diabetes, again, we tend to um, need to inject with insulin as well because the body's not producing any at all. Um, okay, cool. So, 15 questions, guys. How did we do? How did you get on? Um, Wib says, can transgender people have children? I'm not entirely sure, mate. I really don't know about that one, actually. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't braced for that question this morning. I really couldn't tell you, buddy. Um, I could be, uh, want to have a look into. At a different time, I think. Um, I, I don't know if we can go down that rabbit hole this morning, but yeah, if you do find out, do let us know. Okay, guys, so yeah, 15 questions. How did we get on with those? Um, okay, guys, cool. So um, we have this, uh, this next little bit of linking quite nicely with you as well, because, of course... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because, um, yeah, I know that you music and it's it's something that I use quite a lot as um, I use it quite a lot. It's sort of like a sort of like release a little bit, almost as it like a distraction. Um, it can relax you quite a lot as well. Um, I find it's as much as anything though, it keeps you it keeps your brain active and your hands active at the same time. You know, to the point where you sort of got them both focused on doing on one thing. You know, you not only can your mind not stray off to other thoughts that are either sort of um, unproductive or um, potentially even negative. You know, um, trying to trying to keep your keep your mind busy as well. Again, especially through lockdown and stuff like that. Um, but of course, keeping the brain challenged as well. But there's lots of different ways we can do that. Um, and, and we've got some of them on screen here, not necessarily all of them, but, you know, anything um, that, that sort of challenges the mind as well, like crosswords, um, you know, I've, I've, I've mentioned before, I'll, I'll quite often start my day where I'll sit and have like my morning cuppa and I'll just do a crossword or two and, you know, just kick, kick the mind in, try and get it working, try and get it active. Um, we've got puzzles, you know, be it either physical jigsaw puzzles, um, which, which, which are the same thing. I mean, puzzles these days, you see some of them, you can get 3D puzzles that you build. Um, my mum used to do one that was like, it was, it was this one type of jigsaw, but like the picture on the front of the box, um, obviously you had the picture on the front of the box, but the picture on the puzzle that you were making was the same scene, but say like 30 seconds later. So if on the box, you know, you've got, you've got like, for example, like, um, like you've got a room full of people and like a snake sneaking in like the back door and nobody notices it in 30 seconds. What's that room going to look like? So it's not like you're just looking at the box and saying, right, I'm looking for this bit. I'm looking for that bit. You don't know what the, what the jigsaw even looks like, but it, it gets the mind working, you know, gets you thinking a little bit. Um, so, so anything like that, but I mean, I've seen 3d models of big Ben, Graceland, stuff like that. Then of course, like I say, puzzles, 
you can even do there's apps these days now where you can put um what you can do you can put like your own pictures on and um like like a file on your phone and your phone will break that up into a jigsaw so you're doing like it could be a picture of you and the kids or your parents or, or like your, your pet whatever it might be you get your own picture the app breaks the app into a jigsaw and you sort of slide the pieces into the right place so you can even do it on your phone if you've not got like space to obviously um physically be doing jigsaws and, and puzzles and stuff like that but puzzles i guess really could um also refer to um sort of like problem solving as well you know i remember um i remember in school we did this one where you had like you were you were trying to get from one side of the river to the other but the raft was only big enough for like two things at once. And it was like, you had like a fox, a chicken and some, some grain. And you couldn't leave the chicken with the grain because the chicken would eat the grain. You couldn't leave the fox with the chicken because the chicken would eat, uh, the, the fox would eat the chicken. But, and obviously you were backwards and forwards. You're like, oh, I can't leave that there. And it was so interesting. Um, like that sort of thing. And just trying to think like analytically a little bit. Um, and, and, and like I say, a problem solve. It's just so good for the mind. And we've actually got like a couple of little challenges that I want to do uh, in a couple of minutes and see um, see how that, that corner of our brain works because, you know, it's um, it takes, it's, it's a skill, I think, problem solving and that sort of thing. You know, it's, um, it's definitely a skill that requires work as much as any skill. It requires sort of refining and, and staying on top of them and sort of keeping it nice and sharp. Um, then we've got drawing. As well, you know, um, I've, I've never been a drawer myself. I like to draw and doodle, but I'm terrible at it. Um, like I say, even when I used to do like um, circuit cards for me training sessions and stuff like that, demonstrating how to do exercises, it was always stick man. It was always stick man. I've never been able to draw. Um, but again, you know, it's um, some of us are like a lot more that way sort of inclined. This this day and age, you know, it might not be just necessarily drawing, it could be painting, it could be, you know, watercolours, oils, pastels, crayons, chalk, whatever it might be, like you can do, um, you've only got the same one episode of Art Attack back in the day to know that you can make sort of all sorts out of anything, you know, you see these, um, these, 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 projects that people will do that from the ground they don't look like anything then you get a bird's eye view and then they've done a picture or laid a message out or something like that that's so cool as well you know like that sort of thing um of course that's a little bit more intensive and takes a little bit little bit longer but anything where we're sort of um creating you know could could be could be whatever you want it to be um then one that certainly I, I, I relate to quite a lot, and I, I know that Wib will as well, being a musician, is is is, is music, you know. Um, there's, you know, for all, like, you can stand and do the washing up, and, like, in 15 minutes, like, I'm, I'm like, mentally checked out, I'm bored, I'm ready to be somewhere else. But if I hear, like, a, like a drum beat in a song, or I hear a guitar riff or a bass line or something, I'm like, I'm going to go and learn that. And I can spend three, four hours without even looking up from where, wherever I'm learning it from, you know, be it a YouTube video or proper like tabs, um, wherever I'm learning it from, I, um, you know, can, can just, just not, not think about anything else. And before you know it, it's been hours and it's, it's so, um, like I say, just to, even from a coordination point of view, whatever it is that you do and getting, you know, um, hitting things if you're playing the drums and you're, you're hitting things in time and in rhythm, you know. Um, of course, if you're playing playing a guitar you're thinking, or a bass, you're thinking about what's this hand doing for frets and chords and the other one's got a strum or, or pick. It might be on a keyboard, of course, where you've got the same sort of thing going on, chord shapes, um, octaves and all of that sort of stuff that um, is, is at the limit of my musical knowledge because drummers aren't musicians <laughs> if you ask anybody that is actually a musician um, so so yeah um, there's, 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 there's so, mu uh, so much benefit to um, a little bit of music and, and, and like I say like just learning chord shapes progressions stuff like that it's so good for your brain activity and, and, and like I say that coordination sort of thing um, and just for well, just just for mental health as well. I think you know sometimes we need to we need to learn to just ease off the pedal and 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 and, and chill out a little bit. Or um, just see, Wib says Vincent Van Gogh's your favorite artist. Nice, he did the old um, was it Starry Starry Night? 
Um, y- yeah, like uh, art, art's one of those funny ones that, of course, it's very, um, it's very subjective, isn't it? You know, what I like, you might not like, but music's the same. You know, music's exactly the same. Novels are the same. Mov- movies are the same. Anything could be the same, really. You know, there's there's so much um, range out there. And, um, you know, it might not be you have to like the same stuff, the same music, the same artwork or the same art styles or, or, or whatever it is, you know. Um, but there's, there's, there's something out there for everybody. And it's just finding something that we relate to as well a little bit, I think. Oh, and your favorite, your favorite classical composer is uh, Mozart. Yeah, you can't beat a bit, can't beat a bit, uh, a bit of Mozart. Um, okay, guys, cool. So uh, the last one that we've got on there, actually, that I can't believe I didn't mention just a minute ago, is of course reading as well. When it comes to when it when it comes to books and you know some of us like biographies and to read about real stuff that happened from you know celebrities that we've only ever seen on screen and we like to feel a little bit closer to them and get to know them and like it's almost a little bit more intimate, isn't it? You know, then of course we've got we've got fiction that can range from from horror to sci-fi to fantasy, whatever it might be. And again, it's um it's like when I'm reading something, I'm sure a lot of us do this. Of course, like sort of like your mind's eye is working to sort of visualize what it is that you're reading, unless you've seen the movie first, in which you know your brain has got a reference point of what that room looked like or what that character looked like or whatever. You know, when you've just reading a book. Um, your mind does all of that itself, and it's 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 always um, it's always working that, that 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 bit harder, you know, like your imagination's kicking in, um, which which again is I think it's 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 quite a good exercise in sort of imagination, creativity, and um, yeah, just just again challenging your brain a little bit, challenge your mind, um, which is something that like from a, from a deep level of self self care. You know, we've got physical self-care and exercise and eating well. I think to a certain degree, we need like a little bit of a, a little bit of a challenge. We need that intellectual um, sort of self-care as well, you know, for our mind as well as our body. Oh, we don't even get me started on trying to uh, trying to trying to play and, and sing at the same time with certain things. Um, I, it absolutely amazes me. Um, one of my... Um, one of my favorite drummers of all time did did very good and very consistent um back and vocals and when you listen to some of the stuff that he, he was playing at the same time like it, it just blows blows your mind but like i say there's some very very talented musicians out there that sing as well at the same time i mean he's not with us anymore but you've only got to look at hendrix you know eric clapton one of the best guitarists probably ever mr Slowhand himself doing the vocals you know we say it so often um, and that is just that next level of coordination i think that um i certainly don't have anyway i i really don't i start singing and like um everything else just falls off the cliff it really does um i say what you're saying with about um i can never focus on reading too much um, it could be like a restless thing. It could be trying to find a comfortable position, um, something, so, something like that. Um, or, or, or maybe it's just, you know, what like the content and the source material that you are actually reading. What I do quite a lot with, um, I listen to audio books because it means that I can be listening and doing all of that and, you know, imagining and not necessarily staring at a screen. And I can do that while I'm active. I can stretch. I can exercise. I can be doing jobs around the house. I can have the dog out for a walk. You know, I can be driving in the car, maybe even, you know, depending where I'm going, what I'm sort of um, in the mind mindset for. Um, um, who's, who's what with? Sorry. Um, um, I must have missed that there two seconds. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I did used to um, and still do listen to quite a lot of audio books because it saves me... Um, if, if I don't, truth be told, I don't know whether it's faster. It's probably not faster, but it just frees up frees up my hands. And like I say, I've not got to sit still, you know, because um, especially through lockdown, I found myself doing enough of that. Um, or oh, the the drummer and the singer, Wib. Um, he was a guy called James uh, Jimmy Jimmy Sullivan for a band called Avenge Sevenfold. Um, and they're a little bit heavy. They're a little bit hard rock, heavy metal sort of thing. Um, they're not everybody's cup of tea. But the the drummer was one that his his style always stood out to me um, when I was a lot younger as well, um, and yeah, some of the vocals that he does in the background, 
um, is, is, is absolutely amazing on some of the stuff that they do. Um, then, if you did want to go outside the box a little bit, um, my favourite drummer is a guy called um, Danny Carey. And he's 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 like an octopus, guys. Like he's got, <laughs> it sounds like he's got eight limbs all playing the drums at the same time. He's um he's like he's an absolute monster. So again, like you've got drums and keeping your mind busy, and then you listen to somebody who's playing three like four different beats with different parts of his like for each different limb is playing its own different beat and its own time signature, and you just like cannot understand it. Um, right, I'm just going to go and pull those blinds because that um, that light is killing me, camera. Two seconds. There we go. That should be a little bit better. Okay, guys, cool. So, uh, where are we? Where are we? So, you've been thinking of audio books for Sheila. What sort of stuff does she like, though? That's the thing. You know, is she a, is she a fiction? Is she like audio books? Is it is it sort of like um? Can you find a celebrity or something, you know, that that that, that, just, that she really likes and would like to know more about? Um, I think I read probably more um, biographies uh, like, and like autobiographies. Again, a lot of musicians, um, some sportsmen as well, you know, footballers, as opposed to um, much fiction. Um, I don't uh, don't read much fiction. Fiction's the sort of thing I would probably do in an audio book. Autobiography, I would pick up and read like a chapter from here and there. I think. Uh, okay then, guys. But um, I'll have a th- I'll have a think with uh, especially if you let us know what sort of stuff she's uh, she's into, and I'll um, see if I can find anything because I know that the guys in the office might have uh, a couple of suggestions as well. Okay, guys, so while we're, while we're on about this, um, you know, the idea of stimulating our brain and you know, trying, to, trying to improve our day-to-day um, brain activity, uh, on the next couple of slides, we've got a few brain teasers to try out. So comment in the chat, let me know if you can work it out. Yeah, just before we spin on, um, the best place to get audio books, believe it or not, there's so many on YouTube, Web, you don't even buy them. Like, I just stream a load on um, on YouTube. Um, I've just finished listening to Jurassic Park not long ago, like the original Jurassic Park. I'd never read the book. Obviously, I've seen the movie. Who hasn't seen the movie? Um, but yeah, just just went back and did the audio book. Um, I don't even know where the urge came from, actually. But uh, yeah, uh, that's what I've just done. But I find a load on there. Um, I know that um, there's like an app called Audible. And then, of course, you've got stuff like Kindles and stuff like that as well that you can get them from. But, um, you know, if if you can, um, even even ebooks um, can save you quite a bit of money because, of course, you're just getting them digital these days. Um, so, yeah, you could look into that as well. So maybe um, either Audible or... Um, Audible, try YouTube, um, or or maybe a Kindle, and then I think it's probably got its own. I've never I've never had a Kindle or used one actually, so I don't know actually how you download or, or get the books onto there. There's probably like a store like this for apps. Um, if anybody else knows that, <laughs> let us know. Okay, guys. So our first little brain teaser that we've got to do. Um, so both of these triangles are made from the same shapes. Can you work out how one has this additional square area labelled A? So where is this extra square come from? Oh, you actually do a song by um, Avenged Sevenfold, do you, Wib? That's pretty cool. Which one? They were one of my favourite bands for, for such a such a long time. Um, and like I say, that that... The drummer style always always stood out to us. Um, Shayla likes Gone with the Wind. I've never even seen that. It's quite bad to admit. Actually, I think that's a classic. Put myself to shame. Hang on. Uh, okay, guys. So just a cu- couple of minutes on this. Um, so uh, with an ebook, just while everybody else is is having a look and trying to figure out where this additional um, a square comes from, an ebook is is essentially just like a, an electronic book, um, like you would read on it on a Kindle or something like that. But the amount of um, because 
with an ebook, you kind of remove the the need for a publisher, really. You know, there's nobody or, or a printer. There's nobody who needs to put the ink onto physical paper on a page. Nobody need to um, print print however many copies of the book off and distribution around the world and stuff like that. A lot of that um, is 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 removed in in just using like ebooks. Um, so like I say, you can, you can go on people's like, you might find that you're reading through even just a blog or you might watch a specific YouTube video and it might say, oh, for the free, um, for the free, um, a book, follow this link and it'll take you there and it'll download you like, uh, like maybe, um, I don't know whether it would be a word document, maybe it would be a PDF or something like that. And you would read it that way. Um, But yeah, like I say, um, it's 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 win-win all around, really. I th- I think because it 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 makes people who you know who wouldn't necessarily um have access to writing something and publishing it and and sharing it with others, um, it means that you can, you know. I don't imagine there would be very much um stopping. Me or or, or or you writing an ebook and just saying to people, right, if you want to download it, this is where you go to download it. Um, would a tablet work? Yes, uh, Wim, I'm, I'm sure a tablet probably would work if you were going to put um if you were going to put like Audible or something on it. Yeah, a tablet would work, or YouTube even a tablet would work. Yeah. Ebooks, I'm not entirely sure unless there's like an app. For um, like reading ebooks, um, but either way, you would just download them as normal, and then they would be on your be on your phone or, or your tablet as well. Um, my pet ask one of the guys about that. Actually, I am I'm certainly not uh, the most technical member of the media savvy <laughs> team to be asking about technology. Um, but yeah, I'm 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 guessing so. But a tablet should work in uh, some way, shape, or form. Um, right, time to put uh, everybody out in the misery with this one because this 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 one's hard. This one is. I'll give you that, guys. So we've got uh, we've got all the same shape here. We've got all the same shapes, but for some reason, we've got this extra square in here. Um, so if we count along the bottom, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen squares along the bottom. One is. One, two, three, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So that is also thirteen along the bottom. So where's this extra one come from? So thirty along the bottom. One, two, three, four, five high. One, two, three, four, five. Okay then. Cool. So this extra square. It's a little bit deceptive. So the tr- the key to this lies in the angle of this side, yeah, and the the way that it passes through um, other squares, and that's where we see the biggest difference. So what we've actually got on the right hand side, it's hard to tell because of the grid that it's on, but this line dips inwards quite a lot more yeah um than on this side on this side it almost sticks out so this side sticks out more and this side dips in more and what what we actually end up with is um that's where the difference comes from so the um triangle on the left we've got is sort of more the outer line, yeah, this one up the outside. And then the one on the right is much more like this one, this little triangle on the inside. Yeah. So because the one on the um because the one on the left is bulging and sticking out, that's where the extra um gap has come from. That's where the extra of the triangle is. That's where it's gone to. Yeah, so that difference makes up the A. And you can actually see... Um, oh, hang on, hang on. Um, 
the cheapest and easiest to get. I really couldn't tell you when it comes to um, tablets, but you probably best to have a look around. And like I say, maybe just one of the lads who uh, know a little bit more about tech than I do. Um, they would probably be able to, you'd probably be able to use them um, offline. Yeah, I'd have thought so. Um, but take it easy, Wib. Thanks for logging in, mate. Um, nice to have a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a catch up. Um, I'll have a look for that um, live stream that you did as well, mate, and uh, have, a, have a scan through that as well. Um, take it easy, mate. Stay safe, um, and I'll catch you when I catch you. Um, maybe maybe Friday morning in in, in our drop ins, buddy. But yeah, I'll see you when I see you, bud. Take it easy. Um, and cheers for uh, dropping in this after uh, this morning, mate. Thank you. Um, right, guys. So yeah, that was where the um, that was where the extra area came from. And just before we move on, um, we can actually see if you follow from the right uh, top right corner down over and just look at what is left or how much of the sort of square is un uh, sort of untaken up by the um, triangle. So we can see the first square is quite similar. Second one's quite similar, but then we get over to here at the top of that arrow. That little gap is smaller than that little gap. And then that sort of just increases from there all the way down. Um, so we can see, yeah, the middle's bulging. The one on the right is sagging, and that's where that extra distance has come from. So we can afford that space to be there. Um, yeah, so it's the shape of the triangles. Uh, okay, okay then. So... Let's have a look at another one. Um, okay, so we're trying to divide this land into four equal shares. Each share must be the same shape and size, so the same amount of blocks. And each one's got to have three grass and one tree. So the same shape, four equal shares, three grass and one tree in each. Yeah, so I'll give you a couple of minutes, have a little bit of a think, and we'll go from there. I'll give you a little clue, um, a quick little clue. Think about um, letters of the alphabet. Think about letters for our shapes. So remember, we need three bits of grass and one tree in each. So a couple of minutes, a couple of minutes. Um, in fact, we'll just give it another minute. And then anybody who wants a little bit longer, if you um, are persistent and, and want to get it yourself, and you think that you're close, yeah, don't let me spoil it for you. I'll move on, and you just pause it and, uh, and get it cracked and then, and then catch up if that's the way that you want to do it. Uh, okay, so there's actually two ways to do it. There's actually two ways it can be done, and the way that, the way that I normally do it is with the letter L. So we've got an L shape, and um, this is reversed. Yeah, so it's 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 backwards. Yeah, so you'd have, um, what have we got? An L there, an L there, an L there, and one there as well. Yeah, so we can get four L's in there, 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 and there. And get our four L's, all the same size, all got four blocks in, three tree, uh, three grass, and one tree in each. Yeah, so it can be done. And um, the other way to do it is with um, 
with a T. Yeah, there's a way it could be done with a T. So you could have, um, let's just have a think. So there'd be that one. There's a T. That would be a separate one. That would be a separate one there. And then the last T would be there. Yeah, so there's two different ways you can do that. Both letters of the alphabet. Um, okay, then. So, last one. Last one before we start to have a little bit, uh, I think, about our diet, bit of nutrition, and thinking about healthy eating. Um, so, imagine that this is a office space. Yeah? Brand new building. Um, and it needs dividing into four equal spaces. Yeah? So, each space has to be the same shape and size. We've got to split it into four. How could we do that? What do we think? How can it be done? Can it be done? I'll give you a clue. It can be done, but how? Yeah, can we divide this office space into four equal spaces that are all the same shape and size? And again, we'll give it a minute. And then I'll uh, let you know. And this one, I did kick myself a little bit with this one. Once I figured this one out or once I uh, realised what it was, I did. I kicked myself a bit with this one. Okay, let's have a look then. Let's have a look. So, four equal spaces, the same shape and the same size. Well, as close as I could get to with drawing. Like I said, I'm not much of a drawer. No, no, I'm no artiste. So the L shape, guys, is the way to do it. So an L, just in the inner corner, that would be one office. Another one here. Another one here. And another one just above it as well. Yeah. So we've got one, one two, three, four office spaces, all the same size and shape. Everyone should be happy enough. Nobody's got the bigger office than anybody else. Okay, cool. So... Like I say, anything like that, there's, um, of course, there's websites out there that are dedicated to um, similar stuff like that. Um, if you're interested and, in, in, like I say, if you have a little explore yourself and you can't find anything, let me know and I'll, um, I'll, I'll, I'll find you a couple of links over to um, places you can do that. But like I say, even sort of like brain training, problem solving, you can get apps on your phone these days. Um, just as a little bit of something to do, even if it's just in your downtime. You know, um, whatever it might be, you're waiting on a phone call or um, there's an advert in something that you're watching or whatever it might be, just doing a little bit of something. Um, okay, guys, so as promised, um, we're going to just wrap up uh, by spinning on and having a, a, a little bit of a talk and a little bit of a think about our our food and our and our nutrition and, and the benefits of a healthy diet as well, you know, and um, what what would we expect to gain from having a healthy diet? You know, um, what's what's the benefits? What's the uh, what's the big deal? So they say. Um, so let's 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 actually break it down and have a little bit of a think. So we've got, um, of course, um, I guess we could start off by um, saying controlling your weight. You know, if you are uh, being a lot more mindful of what you're eating, trying to be a little a little bit more control in your food, um, or of your food. Um, you can you can use it to control your weight as well. Um, a healthy diet um, can help you um, in a lot of ways beyond losing weight. Um, but that is um, that is one of the main benefits that we could get from it as well, especially as we learn more and more about food. You know, to um, realizing what and how we can. Um, get our body into a position where it's going to gradually but sort of slowly but consistently lose weight or even go the other way and and, and, and put a little bit of weight or, or muscle on if that's what we're trying to do. Um, of course, we're less likely to be ill because we, if we're eating a healthy diet, we're getting, you know, um, plenty of vitamins and minerals and getting some good nutrition in there. Um, it helps our immune system out quite a lot, which helps us sort of fight um, invading sort of bodies uh, in our body and in our system um, and, and, and helps um, 
sort of replenish and and our our blood cells and like I say our immune system that actually attacks these these germs and and potential um, contaminants or whatever anything that might make us ill. Um, our body has a much better chance of fighting it if it's in a healthy state to start with. Um, of course, we're going to become healthier and feel hopefully better um, day to day, you know, um, sort of less sluggish in our movements, hopefully a little bit more energy as well, which is another one on there. You know, we should be having a little bit more get up and go, a little bit more drive, a little bit more motivation, just because we're getting the stuff that our body actually needs. You know, um, if you think of your body like a vehicle, like a car, um, if you don't put the right stuff in it, it doesn't go anywhere. And doesn't do what you want it to do or what it's designed to do. And the human body is the same. If you um, are putting suboptimal quality stuff in, it's the same as like if you've got the choice between like a really cheap, like crappy gas for the for your car or a really good quality version. You know, if you're running it on the cheap stuff all the time, it's going to break down. It's going to break down a lot sooner. Um, so, yeah, we're thinking about... Um, longevity as well and and like i say um helping our body repair itself as well um we're going to hopefully you know gain a bit of confidence in ourselves and um, especially as our physique starts to change hopefully in the way that we want to but just in the way that we feel as well you know in in carrying yourself and like i say yeah uh, even to an extent you know sort of like yeah your confidence walking into a room or talking to somebody for the first time or approaching somebody to talk to them for the first time, you know, confidence in your own abilities. What can you do? What are you capable of? Um, what are you going to say no to because you don't feel like you can just, just sort of straight away. Um, so there's, 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 a, there's a lot of benefits. Uh, last one on there that we haven't really mentioned is sleeping better as well. You know, if you're thinking about um, healthy diet, you're not getting as much sugar especially right before bed as well you know you go you go to bed if you're not thinking about your um if you're not thinking about your um nutrition at all really you know you could be having like a load of caffeine right before bed a load of sugar and a load of junk which is going to interrupt your body's natural sort of um sort of rhythm and whereas you're tired and your body knows that it's tired, you've got a load of sugar in your system that's giving you a potential sugar rush. Like I say, caffeine, if you're drinking too late on an evening, is going to interfere with your sleep as well. And, you know, we talked even, even last week quite a lot about um, the importance of getting a good night's sleep um, and how we can rely on sugar to compensate for that. Uh, and then again, we think about diabetes and what we've talked about already this morning and how, how much of a vicious circle that could be to get into, you know, and we've got to break it somewhere, you know. Um, like I say, you're, you're getting um, less healthy foods. Um, you're eating a load of sugar. You're not sleeping as well. You're tired the next day. You rely on sugar and caffeine to get you through the day again. And like I say, it becomes a really tough cycle to get out of. So how can we how can we make choices? How do we know what's healthy and how do we know what's not? Um, even if we can pick up a food label and you know break down some of the information, what is carbohydrates? What's protein? You know what's sodium? Because you know that might be on there as well. Um, so even if we can figure that out, even if we can figure out, okay, this food per hundred grams, ten grams of sugar, is that good? Is that bad? How do we even know? Um, so I've actually got the answer for you. So this is what I use, and this is what um, manufacturers tend to use as guidelines for um, for their products. Yeah. So um, this will. I'm not getting the door again. I'm not getting the door again. Um, right. Uh, so if we've got um, sort of per 100 grams and we should because any any food products that we uh, get that we you know buying in the shops or anything that's got a food label on should really say per 100 grams um this food has got this much of this in this much of that and this much of this in um and and that is um that is law that is um required because per 100 grams it means that you compare it to other things you know, they can't just, if they were to put per serving, 
then that, that that's one thing. But per serving might mean, you know, like if it's cereal, you might be pouring out double, triple the serving, you know, and getting more than you even realize. Um, so it, you can't just think about, okay, I'm having one serving because I've had one bowl. You know, you would have to actually weigh it out. And again, if, if a serving of something is 30 grams and a serving of something else is 200 grams, well, then you'd be thinking, you know, um, how do I compare these? What's, what's better? What's healthier? So if we have just the one standard per 100 grams, and that levels the playing field for everything. Yeah, so we've got per 100 grams, and then we can say, okay, per 100 grams, what is high? What, will, what should be considered high? What should be considered low for each of these different categories? Yeah, so we're talking sugar, fat, saturated fat, and salt. Yeah, so um, what's considered high? What is low? And we've even got that sort of medium or that middle bracket in between, yeah, and in the middle. Um, so this is a really handy tool to have sort of um, on hand. I actually have this printed off on the fridge. Um, you could keep it saved on your phone as a screenshot. Um, you know, you could print it off and keep it in your purse, your wallet, your handbag, wherever it might be, just for a handy reference to like, okay, what's considered high in fat. This has got per 100 grams. This has got like 12 grams of saturated fat. Is that high or is that not? And we can actually see, Per 100 grams, 12 grams of saturated fat would be considered high because it, you only need five to be considered high. Yeah. So we can actually use that um, on a, a lot of different food stuffs. If I'm, I'm actually going to go and raid the cupboard and um, grab a couple of items and we will uh, we'll break them down and see what we've got on our hands. Right, guys, we've got both ends of the spectrum. We've got one quite healthy, one not so healthy. Um, okay, so going to start with some good old Heinz baked beans. So when you actually see a food label in the shops, if you can see the nutritional information that's laid out with the color system. This is the chart that they use for that color system. So if it's green, we know that it fits into these brackets. And if it fits into these brackets, it can show itself as green. Yeah. So what have we got here? So we've got per half a can. So per half a can, although it will still be either green or orange or red. Per half a can, the numbers are no good to us because this is per 100 grams. So what we need to find is where it says per 100 grams. And there it is there on the back. I mean, that'll probably be backwards and probably really blurry. But yeah, we don't want to be looking at these numbers. We always want to look at per 100 grams. So per 100 grams for sugar, we've got 4.7. So for sugar, we've got 4.7, and that falls into the low category, yeah? So just like it says on the side, where the, where the colors were, it's low, it, it, it can be, it's, it's green. Um, okay, so we're low in sugar, and they actually changed their recipe to get under that threshold. It used to be higher. But they, they changed it when this sort of thing came in. Um, they changed it to be able to put the, the green color on there. Um, okay, then. So then we've got fat. Per 100 grams again. Fat, 0 0.2 grams. Well under 3 grams. Yeah. So we're low again. We're green again. Nice one. Sugars. Uh, no, we've done sugar. Saturated fat, sorry. Saturated fat, we've got 0.1. So same again, that is well in the low category. Yeah. 
then for um, salt, which may show up as sodium on some stuff. So that, that, that's all you're looking at there. Salt, sodium, pretty much the same thing. Salt is 0.6. So we know 0.6 is obviously higher than 0.3, not quite as high as 1.5. So it fits into this bracket. Yeah, it fits into the medium. So we've got three greens, an orange, which is what we've got on the side of the tin. Yeah, but if we didn't have those colors there, we could now work it out for ourselves. Yeah, because not all products will have the colors on. So it's handy to be able to figure out what those colors should be yourself because you can guarantee stuff that is quite high in these foods don't have to put the colors on. Well, they, they don't put the colors on because they don't have to put the colors on. The only thing that's law is the per 100 gram reading so you can compare it, yeah? They don't have to have the colors on. So, you know, Heinz are the good guys. They want to let us know that this is quite healthy and um, it's quite good for us. Um, so... We can make that. We can make that choice, really. You know, we can we can find stuff that our body actually needs, that our body's got a purpose for, um, and we know if it's if it's got any sort of nasty sort of nasty extra stuff in that we might want to stay away from. Um, so it is handy to be able to figure figure those out. Um, but but like I say, learning all of these numbers and being able to like remember them on the spot it's difficult it takes time you know i need a refresher from time to time as well so that's why it's on the fridge and i can just have a look and you know like i say have a look and see right okay two reds a green or an orange or whatever it might be you know um so yeah really helpful tool to have on hand right let's do it then guys the dreaded nutella let's do some nutella what's nutella got and you'll notice no colours on here. Not that I can see anyway. So we've got no colours. And what usually stands out to me when there's no colours, or my first thought is usually they haven't put the colours on for good reason. They don't want us to see how bad it is. They have to put per 100 grams, but... They don't have to put the colours on. So if they just put the per 100 grams, they hope that people like us look at it and see X amount of sugar, but don't know whether that's high or not because there's no colours. And without this chart, you wouldn't know what's high in sugar. So let's do it then. Let's have a look. So let's do, um, let's do sugar first. So remember, per 100 grams, and then Nutella's got it on because it's legal, uh, legal requirement, per 100 grams, sugar. 56.3 grams and in order to be high in sugar we only need to be 15 grams per 100 grams so we're nearly like we're nearly four times the amount of sugar that it takes to be high in sugar in Nutella yeah almost per like right, per 100 grams 56 grams of sugar that's more than half so literally half of this tub is sugar so up to about there, maybe. Just sugar. Just sugar, yeah. And you'll notice in a, in a very clever branding change, they moved away from being chocolate spread, and now they are um, hazelnut spread with cocoa. Yeah, so again, uh, almost like trying to, trying to lead you to believe that it's healthier than it is. Um, which, like I say, a lot of these foods tend to do when they're not very healthy. They'll try and uh, convince you that they are. Um, okay, then. So that was sugar. Bit of an eye-opener. What about fat? Fat per 100 grams, 30.9. And we can see that to be considered high in fat, we only need to be over 20 grams per 100. So we are... Um, we're another 10 grams higher than that, really. So we're high in fat. So we've got two reds to start us off with. Saturated fat. Saturated fat, 10.6. So saturated fat, we are on double the amount that it takes to be 
high in saturated fat. Yeah? So, what have we got there? What have we got? So essentially, if you think about it per 100 grams, if half is sugar, then we've got another 30% or so that's fat. So sugar, fat, there's not much left. There's not much room left for anything else. Um, okay, then. So saturate the fat, then salt. What have we got to finish us up with? Salt is 0.1 per 100 grams. But, of course, you wouldn't expect to find much salt in here. So salt is the only one that would be classed as green. So we've got three reds and a green. And now we can work that out. Now we have worked that out. I don't think it's much of a surprise that there's no colours on this. Because you would walk past it, you'd see straight away, you know, um, something that even on the front, if we say on the front, hazelnuts, little green leaves, like it's it's trying to, um, it's trying to make you think that it's healthy. On the side here, it says our quality, seven ingredients, no hydrogenated fats, no preservatives, no colours. You know, same again, you could look at that and be like, great, happy days. Happy days, you know, it's got hazelnuts in. Um, only 13% of it's hazelnuts, apparently. Um, but but yeah, that that as much as anything st is sort of stands out as an example of why companies might not put these colours on, because if they put colours on, they just make it too obvious and identify themselves as unhealthy, as opposed to sort of leaving you in the dark and leaving that up to you to know what's healthy and what's not. You know, because unless we know this sort of stuff, we're flying blind, we're making choices, and we're bringing it home based on the, what the brand is trying to say to us and what it's sort of trying to sell itself as, as opposed to what it actually is. So really good way to just make sure that all the wrong stuff doesn't come home in the first place because once it's home, we know it's so much easier to end up snacking on it, especially if you're working from home or spending more time at home than normal and the kitchen and the cupboard, just two minute walk away, not even that, like five second walk away, you know? So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it tends to be easier. And the way that I try and do it, if I can, is just, just don't have it in. You're much less likely to have it. Um, if, if, if you, sort of got to, got to go out and get it. you just find something else that's in. Um, okay, guys, that'll actually wrap us up quite nicely for today. Um, if you struggle at all to get a screen grab of this, but you want a screen grab, uh, again, let me know and I'll try and find a way to get it across to you so you've got this information on hand just for making those. Again, it might even be a quick decision, especially these days with... Um, the way that sort of shops and supply chains are struggling, you might go to a shop and your normal brand of something sauce or, or this product that you normally get might be out, out of stock, can't get hold of it. You've got to find a replacement or a substitute. Um, what's a good option? Don't just pick up the first brand that you see. Um, can you actually have a look? Can you try and find low sugar options? Um, for example, I actually went to um, Tesco last week. And I was looking at stuff like trail mix uh, and, and and all of that, that sort of thing anyway, um, like mixtures of nuts and um, raisins and bits of fruit and stuff like that. And the amount of sugar that some of them had in was absolutely insane. The amount of sugar that was coming from, you know, bits of pineapple and bits of coconut, but all that's got like, um, like powdered sugar on the outside and stuff like that, you know, like you'd get with like um, dried banana chips if you've ever had them. They're so much sweeter and so many more calories in dried banana chips than there is actually in in a banana, you know. Um, so, and then I had a, I had a I had a good look. I was looking at all these different options and I found one that was really low in sugar. Um, in fact, I've got a bone grab them now. Oh, these and they were in a totally different section. So um, I'd started off. I was looking in the home cooking section, and they had uh, like to say a, a lot of stuff 
like that, that when I looked on the back of the packet, there was just so much sugar in there. Um, and I found these in the end that are still, um, they're still high in sugar according to this. But of course, remembering that those sugars are coming from good sources, raisins and sultanas, um, it's, it, it, it's not quite so bad. It's just a case of, again, watch how much of these that you do have. Um, so what we've got per 100 grams uh, bum, 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 is uh, bum, 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 about 20 grams of sugar. 20 grams of sugar. So it's high, but it's naturally occurring. And you should have seen some of the other ones. Like some of the other ones were, 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 were triple that, triple that very easily. Um and like I say, I was looking for something that try and keep it relatively low sugar. Um, but again, if I'm going to have some of these, I just make sure I have less sugar in other stuff throughout the day. And I was looking for some of that would give us a good whack of calories without um, necessarily filling me up too much. Um, and I find that nuts and some raisins to break it up really helps with that. Um, so yeah, sometimes it's um, it's making making sacrifices. But again, if I didn't know this information, um, I wouldn't have a clue. Again, um, what I was bringing home, and if you think something is better for you than it is, you'll probably end up eating it more often. Whereas if you know genuinely how bad something is, it doesn't mean leave it out forever and never have it. It just means you you're aware how bad it is, what sacrifices maybe need to be made other like either side. If you're having a cheesecake for like for your dessert, um, you know, maybe cut down on calories and sugars through throughout the rest of the days as well. So there's a lot of different ways we can do it, but it all starts with knowing what is in our food. And if we can't read food labels, guys, we haven't got we haven't got half a chance because you know we've realized and proved today that food companies really no matter what they're trying to say to us, they just want us to buy their stuff. Really, our health um, is on us to manage, and, and and our responsibility as much as it is anybody else's. So um, it's really handy to know what's in our food, what's bringing home, and what we're bringing home, and what we're putting in our bodies as well. I am um, okay, guys. So we'll leave it there. Um, as always, uh, as with last week's session. There is a um, there's a little description box below the YouTube video that's got a load of extra information in that you might need. Um, link to any extra sort of um, supplementary learner info, learner handbook, etc. is in there. Um, our uh, my email is in there as well. If you need it for any reason, if you don't have it yet, my email is in there. Um, let me know and I'll get that across to you. Um, or um, like I say, any anything that you're missing. Um, and the survey is in there as well, guys. So again, just like last week, not even 30 seconds to do the survey. Just click that link. It'll take you where you need to be. Chuck your answers on and come out and the answers. Just come back straight back to us. You don't need to save it, fill it in, send it back, whatever. Um, so yeah, not even 30 seconds to do that, that guys. And um, like I say, as always, it helps us fill in some of the paperwork this end on your behalf. And it, um, like I say, your feedback's always, always important to us guys. Right now, what we're doing well, where we can improve even more and be even better. Um, if you did want to go back and check out last week's session again, now we've talked about, um, you know, diabetes and uh, our uh, nutrition and how that can link in with sleep as well. Uh, by all means, do go back and check out that session or this session again at any point in the future. Um, the same links will work. If you've got any questions in the future, drop me a message. If there's any, uh, if you'd like information about upcoming courses um, that Media Savvy have got coming up, if you'd like to be put on uh, a mailing list for any future courses that come up, again, let us know, either let myself know, let one of the guys in the office know, and we'll make sure that you've got all the information that you need. Um, in the meantime, I will just say thank you for, for learning with Media Savvy. Please don't forget to do that survey um, and check out the day's fitness video as well. So there is a fitness video, again, attached to the day's session. It's an abs workout just for your core. But again, if you're not quite feeling abs on a Monday morning, 
Um, you might want a nice stretch to ease you into the week or whatever. Follow that link still, uh, and it'll take you to our YouTube workout playlist where there's a few different videos, and you can just pick something that um, that suits you for the day, just how you're feeling for the day, really. Um, and yeah, that'll do us, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the course. I hope you've enjoyed the last two sessions. Um, take care. Uh, stay safe. Look after each other. Look after those around you. And like I say, reach out and let us know if you've got any questions, any comments, or if you want any any further information. Um, and yeah, please don't forget to get that survey finished before you uh, wrap up today's session, whether you've watched it live or whether you're watching back in the week. Um, and then that's it. There's no workbooks need handing in or anything like that. If there's any additional information I need for paperwork, I'll either drop you a message or um, I'll either drop you an email or, or, or get in touch another way. Um, and and just get those last couple of bits of info. Um, but yeah, other than that, guys, that'll do us. I'll see you all hopefully on future courses. Um, we've got plenty of exciting stuff coming up with Media Savvy. Um, certainly even in the next six months, never mind the next year. So stay tuned, take care, and um, I'll see you when I see you. Take it easy, guys. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you later. <laughs>